because I met you in five years ago in Buenos Aires when we were in a very like different headspace, different place, different headspace. We were both there as artists. We didn't know each other. We just wanted to experience Buenos Aires and respond and make our work, didn't we? I mean, like, we were there. We were open when we were there. So yeah, we yeah, met yeah. each other in that kind of open headspace. So when we kind of got back together here, I think we took that with us into that and we carried on like in a way that's almost impossible in life with everything else that's going on to be that open to things. Yeah. So I think you're right. I think it, it has got that kind of strange prophetic kind of, <laughs> yeah. aspect, which is what artists do, isn't it? I mean, they stand at the edge of things and look in. So you see things yeah. from a slightly outside perspective because you're choosing to to look into look into the world yeah and to give yourself in a way yeah to it. i think yeah uh, our meeting i think the first meeting where when we met i think when was it in october or something when i first yeah. came back to swansea and we just started working the same minute from the train <laughs> i got yes. into the studio and we started and we like it was it was suddenly happening by itself, if, as if by itself. The painting was there, yeah. the production was there, but it was yeah. something happened. I agree. It was like a a magical moment, and like as also because obviously I kn I knew your work because I'd seen I'd seen yeah. it. I came to Israel. I saw you working in Israel, and you know I understood the kind of the. the the practical processes to a degree, but also philosophically, I understood what you were doing with painting and how you were combining the film and the projection and the movement and the performance and the narrative with like a traditional painting practice. I understood that kind of mechanism, but for you to come into the studio and put your projector and the canvas was blank and just to project the projector with nothing on it, was amazing just that moment when you switched the light on because it being in that dark space as well because having a studio with no windows it's just again it's kind of prophetic how did that even happen yeah yeah have a studio with no windows <laughs> and well. the big studio with no windows and then you put the, the light on and then suddenly there it was this whole opportunity this yeah. kind of like the convergence of everything was made sort of in focus again it was like it was everything was possible I feel as well like this for me it's just such a just a big that my biggest frustration partly is that had we been able to carry on once that work was up we would have carried on and it would have do you know what I mean we'd not we would have done other things because yeah, we yeah, started yeah. to do other things in the gallery and it was kind of mm. like with the keyhole piece it's kind of like I'm like, I'm shocked from it still, but I do feel that we are still in, because it was so intense and so honest in a way, and I hate honesty in art, but it yes. just happened. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, honesty anyway. with quite a large amount of drama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. dramatized honesty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I think, yeah, in a way, if I'm I'm continuing being open and uh, and I'm still here in Swansea, and it's still for me kind of happening. It's not my space. It's not my world at all. I hear seagulls all day. <laughs> it's like it's a different world. But because of that, I feel like we are continuing the process together. Yeah. Yeah. I feel still that I'm in this research of combining your thinking and your practice and your uh, like uh, sculpted paintings yeah. <laughs> yeah and create like a new reflective space to this uh, to our new condition which yeah 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 because i think pansy now for me it started by being a character that no one lets him in. Yeah. But now, no one lets anyone in. It's like yeah. uh, it became something almost. It became every man. Yeah, exactly. It became so. 
I'm, I'm even a bit scared of the prophecy, you know? Yeah. What will happen if, if this is what we channeled, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So suddenly those, that, the, the bureaucracy that we kind of <laughs> highlight in that, where the buildings become paperwork, it's like for everyone, it's like you can't walk from your house to somebody else's house if you don't have a good reason. And there's yeah. now a piece of paper that tells you you can't do that. Yeah, you know what I mean? There's a new law. You can't, you know, the, 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 the restrictions, the tightening of the restrictions, <laughs> obviously for good reason. I'm not criti criticizing it. I understand entirely yeah. why this has happened. But it just reveals, doesn't it, that actually, as much as we live in liberal democracy, things are open to change. And actually, what we think is being the freedoms that we operate in are malleable. They're not static. And just as for the pansy character you know over periods of time laws and regulations have changed to make that that the, the progression through life more and more difficult for that pansy character but as you were saying you know those st the conditions in life can make it difficult for everyone and yeah. they do and this is an exact perfect example of that isn't it is that suddenly the restrictions on our lives are quite immense because of the virus yeah. Because of this natural phenomenon that's happened and the way that we have to to um, manage our lives around it. It does. It's really interesting, actually. And the way that that, that character who is trying to get access to all these things <laughs> is, like you say, like everybody now. Everybody can't. No one can get in anywhere. You can't get yeah. into any of the buildings. You can't. All of the buildings that are yeah. here in the painting that Pansy can get closed. into, no one can get into. <laughs> It's insane. It's isn't insane. It? <laughs> we we started thinking, okay, we can go uh, to Germany now. And even if you have a citizenship, you have to have a reason. Yeah. <laughs> a reason. Yeah. And I, I'm thinking for myself as an artist, a reason. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what, what can be my reason? Yeah. For me, it's strange to be in this point of like, yeah, it's like I am this fancy still, the wanderer, where to go? Yeah. Where to go from here? Like, go there, there, there. It's like the yeah. <laughs> animation from the piece. <laughs> I know, the more you think, the more you think about it, the more, <laughs> the more terrifying the piece is, isn't it? Because like, yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. when we, the, the, the pansy character represented a minority, I mean, a very specific minority but it was about that kind of minority um life through a majority life isn't it so somebody who is living who ha who's not part of the system who is seen as being outside of the system yeah. but suddenly the system has changed so much that uh, so many people are finding themselves in that minor what would have been a minority position yeah. It is very interesting. That, I mean, that was the other thing, the other kind of prophetic thing, because obviously we'd read the Kafka book. But when you look at, I don't know if you did, but that Deleuze book on minor architecture, which refers to Kafka, this idea of that minoritarian voice is really, really interesting as well, that it kind of, that, that, we, that actually it is everybody's voice as well, because everybody has an inner voice that maybe isn't being articulated because they feel that they can't. Mm -hmm. I think that's quite interesting as well. I also really like what you said about my painting being sculptural painting. Yeah. Sculpt because I, I think because of the collaboration, I've thought more about that than I've done for a long time, the, the three dimensionality of the actual canvases. And that last piece that we did, the, the keyhole piece was made yeah, yeah, so yeah. that we had the big pansy diptych, which we knew that we were gonna kind of work towards well it evolved a lot but we kind of that was the sort of central piece but then the keyhole piece kind of developed once we knew what spaces we were going to be in and how we could do you know what I mean so it was something that was in response yeah. to the situation to the gallery to the, the kind of the overall installation but that then you know that's that has come off the wall so it's a painting that's freestanding it's come off the wall and I kind of think for me I really would be interested in exploring that more and those conversations that we were having at the end about the viewing space and how you could work into the viewing space so how you could shift the viewing space so that you know with different levels of flooring or yeah. seating or something that 
actually was part of the exhibition so that the, the there was a more kind of um, incorporated experience. So as soon as you enter the gallery, you're in another world. Yeah. So that the paintings come off the wall into the space. But I think that last piece mm -hmm. where the painting is off the wall, in many respects, not just in its physical sense, but it is a bit off the wall as well, kind of as a way of explaining. Sure. <laughs> yeah, but I think, I don't know, I think there's something really, that's for me the next, well, one of the next things I'd love to explore with you as well is that how yeah. you go beyond the flat surface more. So you I know still, exactly. The you know exactly. <laughs> for it because I keep, first of all, the, the, first, the, the thing you said about the, the viewing condition, where yeah. we, Stopped. Yeah. So, and it was super important for us, and we got to the point where everything is installed, and we were beginning yeah. to think about it, to thinking about it. But then the coronavirus came, yeah. and then suddenly, again with the channeling and blah blah blah, it's it wasn't relevant anymore. Yeah. Like thinking about the viewing condition, like the viewers. Will the viewers ever come to see the piece? Yeah, what yeah, yeah. What is viewing an art piece today? What is art? Is it for the audience at all? Yeah. So now, so uh, I'm thinking, I'm visualizing the studio all the time. Yeah. And now that you say that you are interested in sculpturing the, the painting integral into the space or something, yeah. Yeah. So I only can see the, the wooden floor in the studio, which is a dance floor. Yeah. That we can immediately in the first uh, in the first attempt <laughs> bring al already bring a dancer into the space. Yeah. And to paint and to sculpt with him, with her. <laughs> with, yeah. With like, them. <laughs> yeah. With them. <laughs> Like yeah, like Mammy or Geraint or, yeah. It is po powerful, you know? Like mm. people would say it now, like all these things. Yeah. People are, doesn't want people to get near near them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so it's it's like the, the nature, it's the reality. It's too much <laughs> in a way. Yeah. And I think for the future of the art, in a way, we can, continue doing the thing we did but in a way to document them in the studio and project yeah. them outside the studio and yeah. share them online and yeah. use all the because you always had you you were you your practice is static it's like paint yeah. but yeah. It, it was never static no. never for a minute because <laughs> you wanted the brush to, to be animated in a way. Yeah. So it will happen while, yeah. while I'm watching it. So yeah. I think in a way that was your aim and it's my aim as well. So it's kind of taking the painting, the static, the practice to the new kind of way of how do we share work? How do we show? Why do we show when? yeah what is an exhibition now mm. who will go because the tate exhibition like the educational i don't know going and see picasso i understand it's like yeah. going to see a piece of history or something like reading yeah. a book but for the new art and you know we are using technology all the time we are yeah. we were trying to use uh, augmented reality all those kind of technology which which are so like in the phone you can do it so easily now and we are doing the conversation in zoom <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly although actually you're just just down there so strange yeah but i'm happy because i feel like we did art you know it's mm -hmm. like art i feel it i'm scared of it even <laughs> it's like yeah. it's there it's so it's like the truth mm. lying there i think Ever? it's so interesting what you're saying though about like 
because also for me because I, I know I'm a painter and my most of my practice is in isolation by myself I mean I have worked with people yeah. in the past doing various things but not in that creative moment like so I might work with somebody that like I, you know working with a musician so you do something and they respond and they do something but this when you are actually so you bring I don't know a photograph of a pansy into the studio and then you do something with it that then makes me think of something different, which then I bring back and then you do something. And then, so the actual, the actual creative process is two people thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I've never done that before where it's like in the minuscule, not the big picture, but in the detail in each and every mark and every word that you might, you know, when we, when we thought about the castle, that one word, yeah. that then there's a shared language then that's being developed between us which I've never experienced before and I think because of that you can't rely on the things that you would perhaps do by default because you've been doing it for so long you know as we're established practitioners we have ways of working but if you bring in another element another human another yeah. mind into your way of working you can't work like you've worked before you have to like you say be open to them yeah but then also be open to everything so if you know you come with a pansy flower just a flower <laughs> and that's the beginning that's the catalyst that from that everything wow is based on that reality or a version of reality or a thing an object in the world and you know you can argue that it exists but it's that kind of like every sentence is constructed with one word from you, one word from me, one word yeah, from, yeah, you, one yeah. word from me, but you don't know how the sentence is going to end yeah, yeah, because you don't know what the word is going to be that you're going to bring or I'm going to bring. So that in itself, I think is part why the piece is more open is because we've had to open ourselves up to allowing yeah. somebody else in. But then it's the most exciting thing. It's like, because you don't know what, what that end point's going to be. Even right up until the gallery shut, <laughs> that piece looked different every single day. Yeah. Because <laughs> you kept bringing new things into that space and it just looked different every single day. And it's like, there was never like a finished <laughs> artifact. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's actually a conversation, isn't it? The whole thing is a is a conversation and listening now and having this conversation and thinking like you're saying about bringing that the performer back to the space and I so I got his name wrong it's uh, Gareth not Geraint but bringing <laughs> someone like Gareth or Mammy back into the studio after this thinking about like you're saying what is an exhibition what how do you make an art piece I think that would be such such an exciting thing to do just to without knowing what on earth it was going to be yeah not designing something for something or in in the context of anything not even having a venue for it in that sense maybe the venue is a digital maybe it isn't maybe it's i don't know like not worrying about it <laughs> yeah not thinking about <laughs> it anymore yeah which is quite uh, relaxing <laughs> it is it's kind of in, it's intimidating but it is quite relaxing. Like, so and i think that's kind of like the thing isn't it it's like like as an artist, I've been working like 20, 30 years, I don't know, a long time. And I, you know, the, the, the point that you get the work into the gallery is like, for me, the point you let go of the work and it's sort of, it's, it's standing on its own two feet. It's kind of living autonomously in the world. It's out there. But if for some random reason, like this virus, or like you were saying, the gallery <laughs> burnt to the ground or something, you know, the, that you can't have that in a way, it's just like, it just opens it all up again doesn't it it's like well <laughs> then okay so you can't do that anymore so what what's what is this for what's the, the 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 point of it what's the the point at which it becomes something separate from yourself as well because i mean i think there is that kind of necessity to make it separate from yourself in some respect the other thing i was thinking as well like it's quite ir ironic that obviously we we referred quite a lot to kafka's text the castle and various other works by Kafka. we're not not in any sense like following it in any strict sense but it's been an inspiration but to remember that he didn't publish those texts yeah <laughs> he didn't want them read he wanted them destroyed 
and they were published after he died. And I think, again, that's kind of quite a curious parallel to that. We've got this exhibition and like in the same way that in his lifetime, as far as he was concerned, they were unpublished works. Yeah. And we have this unpublished work, which is in the gallery. <laughs> and whether it will ever be published in that context, because it is, you know, it's made in collaboration with that space. This particular installation can only be as it is in that space. I mean, we can yeah. make versions and do different things, but that installation is in collaboration with the gallery, with the curators there. It, you know, that is it, it is what it is. And it's like, <laughs> if that never gets seen, then that version of, of Pansy, Pansy the first, the <laughs> first year, the first season of the Pansy flower is, is <laughs> unpublished. It's, has a duration it's durational isn't it it's like you go and look at a painting and a painting isn't necessarily durational you know it's as long as you want to spend with it but the painting that we've made has a duration all of the paintings yeah. are durational i mean obviously you can stay there longer than the duration but uh, they yeah. have a <laughs> a beginning and an end isn't it there's like a yeah. but there isn't an end because it then it starts again and it sort of it connects but the idea of having a period like if you meditate it's durational you know people take a particular time to do something and i think that again is quite interesting about the exhibition it has this sort of durational quality to it and i think this this understanding of time has changed during this period i feel that it's a good piece because the the nature of the now is yeah. presented yeah. as it is like it's yeah. it's no, great there's a sort of an immediacy and an urgency about life that life that's, you know, coming particularly with the, the backdrop of the virus now, you know, life is short and life needs to have some sort of celebration. And I think there is that element as well in the collaboration that the intensity of what we can do, bringing together painting and projection, bringing together static and moving can create this condition where you can really really highlight those aesthetic moments in a way that isn't really possible in other ways in and that's another really exciting <laughs> kind of layer or direction you know, yeah yeah wow we are in the, the middle thing, of the work <laughs> yeah exactly but it's like you know painting is the way that painting operates isn't it you know you have like you were, you were saying you were explaining i thought it was wonderful you explained to me and you know you can't <laughs> this is watercolor. This is watercolor because whatever you put beneath will change the color you put on top. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's watercolor. And it's like, but it's also light. So you're, you've got the, the color of the painting, which is reflecting the light. Yeah. And then you've got the color of the film, which is projecting the light. So you've got color working in the, the two ways that color works together. Yeah. which is really exciting in itself in and of itself that you have the you know the color of the painting reflecting the color in the room which would normally just be the lighting in the gallery or in wherever the painting is but you you were controlling that but we're also projecting color onto it color that is much because like if you mix a green it's two colors isn't it mixed together yeah. whereas if you project a green it's pure green light so there's like, there's an intensity that you can get through that process, which is really exciting as well. On a kind of language level, that's kind of where we're meeting is through the language of that, of the aesthetics of yeah. colour. And we are talking slightly different languages, but when you, if you can get them together, it makes a more cohesive language possibly. Yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> No one can judge it, but <laughs> no one can judge it. No, exactly. It is it is our unpublished work. <laughs> we shall wait and see. <laughs> <laughs>